Hello everyone, this is my second video in my study in USA series. From this video, we will deep dive into the each components of application to USA. We will discuss about the application timeline, test requirements, and document collection in this video. Let's go. The first question is when should you start thinking and working on application to the USA? The best time is right now. Yeah, it's right now. If you are in class 11, you should start looking at the universities. If you are in class 12, you should work on your test results. If you have already given class 12 exam, don't worry, it's not late. Start working on these steps, but give them full attention. Even if your 12th result is already out, don't worry, it's not that late. Even I start my preparation after the 12th result. Before that, I was stuck in CE exam. The first thing to remember is you are not late. It's about your future. So if you panic, your future will be in risk. Give enough time to work on these steps. So let's go. Before starting, I suggest getting a dollar card. During the preparation, you may have to pay for test and application fee, which are international payment. And the best way to do international payment from Nepal is using dollar card. Any A-class institution from Nepal will issue a dollar card for you. They may take a minimum payment, but they will issue for you. Let's start with how the academic years look like in US. It's quite different from Nepal. The academic year starts in August, which is called fall year. The fall semester runs from August till December for around 4 to 5 months. Then there starts winter already for around 3 weeks in the month of December, January. Next semester which is called spring semester starts from January. This spring semester also goes for around 4 to 5 months from January till May. Then there is a summer vacation for around 3 months from May to August. You can also take a course in summer as well. So this is how the academic years look like. First 4 months of fall semester, then 3 weeks of winter holiday. Then again, four to five months of spring semester, then three months of summer holiday, or if you take course, it will be summer semester. Now let's talk about intakes. As I said in my earlier video, there are three intakes, fall, spring, and summer. Fall intakes start in August, September. That means that your college will start in August, September. However, the application deadline for the fall intake is from October to February. That means if you target for fall of 2025, then your application deadline will be October of 2024, to February of 2025. Some universities also have something called rolling admission. That means that their deadline is very far and they will accept application and give decision continually. Since you have to submit your application by February if you are targeting for fall semester, you have a lot of things to do before. That's why it will be better to start as soon as possible. Fall semester is the time when all the universities open their application, admit many students and provide many scholarships. That's why fall is the main intake of the year. If you target for fall semester, you have slightly higher chances to get admissions and get scholarships. The next intake is spring intake. Spring intake starts from January. That means your college will start from January. But the application deadline for spring intake is July to November. That means if you are targeting for spring 2025, that means January 2025, you should have submitted your application from July 2024 till November 2024. In this intake, not all universities will open their application and many programs are not offered. Scholarships are also not widely available. However, a major advantage of coming in spring semester is after the semester, you will get three months of holiday where you can work full time and earn some money. People still come in spring intake, but many students come in fall intake. The trend of visa rates is also slightly higher in fall semester than spring semester. Coming in summer intake is very rare and university also doesn't offer much programs in summer. So I suggest avoiding the summer intake. Ultimately, it depends upon your circumstances and your preferences on whether to come in spring or fall. Now let's talk about tests. The first thing you need is English proficiency test. IELTS, TOEFL, PTE and Duolingo are some of the famous English proficiency tests in the market. You may be confused about which one to take. Let me describe you all. IELTS is one of the most widely accepted tests not only in USA but all over the world. The fee for IELTS paper based is 27,100 rupees and the fee for IELTS computer based is 25,300 rupees. The full score is 9 and scoring 6 is consider good in the IELTS. Some universities may require even higher scores. Next is TOEFL, which is accepted by all the US universities. The cost of TOEFL is $180, which is around 24,000 rupees. On average, the score of 80 is considered good in TOEFL. Another option is PTE, which is around 26,500 rupees. Score above 65 is considered good in PTE. Last is Duolingo, which is completely online test. You can give your Duolingo from your own home and it will cost around 13,000 rupees. Regarding acceptance, it depends upon universities. Almost all universities accept IELTS and TOEFL. Talking about some high tier universities, they haven't mentioned the band requirements for PTE and Duolingo, so they may ask for IELTS and TOEFL. But talking about normal universities, they also accept PTE and Duolingo. So it's completely based on your preference and your circumstances. My suggestion is, if you have enough time, go for IELTS or TOEFL. If not, Duolingo is also fine. The expiration date of all the English proficiency tests is for two years. 
so it will be better if you do it at the last of 12th or after 12th exam also if you have 600 plus score in the english section of SAT exam some of the university will waive off your english proficiency test requirement the english proficiency test has nothing to do with visa interview it's the responsibility of your university to check your english proficiency now let's talk about SAT for which you may have heard a lot about the thing is s SAT is optional for many non-elite universities if you have good extracurricular activities to show SAT doesn't matter much. However, in the country like Nepal, where many students don't have strong ECS to show, SAT will obviously give you the boost in application. Universities highly rely on your academic capacity to judge you for the scholarship. So my recommendation is, don't think too much, sit for SAT. Instead of searching for other way, invest your time on preparing for SAT and give it your best. The SAT score will open up a lot of universities to apply for. The cost for SAT exam in Nepal is around 15,000 rupees. There are around 5 to 7 SAT exam in a year in Nepal. So you have to plan your application accordingly. You have to invest at least 3 months for the preparation of SAT. Now let's talk about documents. The first academic documents you need are recommendation letters. These should be issued by the professor of your high school or plus 2. You need at least 2 recommendation letters from 2 different professors of your plus 2. In the meantime, you should also talk with your college counselor. There could be a designated person as a college counselor in your plus 2 college. Or some higher executive person may be handling the college counseling. When you fill up the application form for the universities later on, you have to send your transcripts and recommendation letter and they don't accept it from you instead they require that the transcripts and letters should be sent officially meaning that the documents will be uploaded or sent by the college counselor or professor through their official domain email when you go to the consultancy they will work as your counselor but if your college can do it for free why invest in consultancies the next document you require is bank certificate as i told you in the previous video it's not a bank statement that will tell you the transaction history of last three to four months it's just a bank certificate that show how much money do you or your sponsor have in your account right now with the US equivalent to that amount. Universities mostly need the bank certificate after they give the decision. After acceptance, we require a document from university called I-20. And to get I-20, university require you to upload the financial documents that contain bank certificate. So in this video, we deep dive into the application timeline, test requirements and documents. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to search for universities and shortlist the universities. So start working on your tests and documents. See you until next video. Bye.